Hi, we're here at the Health 2.0 Conference in Las Vegas, Nevada, 2023. Now, who do I have the honor of speaking with? Um, this is Tanya Fasna Jala with LIT Wellness Solutions. Awesome. Now, is it your first time here? No, actually, I was at the IFA conference two years ago, oh. but my first time at Health 2.0. So, that is yeah, awesome. wonderful. Well, welcome back. <laughs> oh, it's and I love the energy. I mean, the energy has been great. That's awesome. That's yeah. good to hear. Now, you are a Health 2.0 Conference USA honoree. I am. So how did it feel to receive recognition for your accomplishments? Um, good. I, I was selected as a visionary. Oh. And, um, you, you know, you'd like to think you have great ideas and everything. Mm. But when somebody recognizes you for that, you kind of get that confirmation that I am an out of the box thinker and I am yeah. approaching health and wellness in a new way. And other people are recognizing that, too. So Such that's good, exciting. Good, right? Yeah. That's so awesome. Now, what advice would you give to somebody that is wanting to follow in your footsteps? Um, I would say don't be afraid to think out of the box. You know, um, health has kind of been pretty scripted. You know, mm -hmm. this is the way we do it. And we're in a time and a season where we've got to think about it differently and look at patient care, look at interaction, look at well-being, just beyond the physical health. We've looked at physical health. COVID brought about mental health. But we really need to look at emotional health and social well-being and looking at all of those components and how that interacts and comes together for the, the whole person. Yeah. And what has been, like, I guess, your favorite idea so far that you come up with? Well, one of the things I'm very encouraged about, especially yesterday, was how much the focus on well-being mm -hmm. is being shifted away from just health. And because they're looking at that whole impact. And so it was nice to hear so many panelists looking at how to bring that well being into focus. Yeah, that's awesome. Just pick different brains. Yeah, and, <laughs> and but but sharing like that like minded view, mm -hmm. which is encouraging. That's awesome. Now, how has your learning and networking experience been so far here at Health 2.0 Conference? You know, it's great. Um, the, the health part has been great, but also being able to collaborate with the other um, conferences that are going on as well. Yeah. I've had some great conversations at lunch yesterday and then ended up meeting some people at dinner uh, oh. and, you know, just having further conversation there, too. So it's been really good. And there's a lot of good time to interact, which has been nice. A lot of productivity. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> now, if anybody wanted to reach you for collaboration or advice, where could they reach you at? Uh, my email is the best way, Tanya, T-A-N-Y-A, at litwellnesssolutions.com. Um, and I am uh, litwellnesssolutions.com is my website, and there's a, a direct connection there as well. Um, one of the things I offer is a 20-minute um, free consultation. So if somebody oh. wants to know if they can want to work with me or if I'm the right fit, that free consultation is a great way to do it. And if I'm not the right fit, I've got a lot of collaboration that yeah. I can then pass some <laughs> off some you know, off to somebody else. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Wow. So what is a culture of wellness and how does it differ from diet culture? That's a great question. Uh, diet culture is what we have known for the last probably three decades. Okay. Uh, it's very much focused on selling products and services. Mm -hmm. And it's very much focused on um, that quick fix. Let me lose 10 pounds. Let me, you know, it's not l looking at how do I keep it off? And how, do, how does that weight change impact my overall health and well-being? Um, disordered eating is a big, big thing, especially in the younger generations. Well, a culture of wellness is the antithesis to that. It's looking at the whole person and it's saying, okay, what am I doing with food? Why am I doing it? And how can I do it differently to bring in impact health and well-being? And one example that I'll give you is I am a registered dietitian. So oh, I've worked awesome. with people for years and years yeah. on weight loss. But that weight loss is usually focused on, let me lose 20 pounds and then I gain back, you know, 10. Well, what if you lost 10 pounds and you kept it off for five years? Health wise, that's better for you mm -hmm. than the whole up and down, up and down. But that's a mind shift, right? Because yeah. you think more is better. Well, it's not better on your body if you don't maintain that or you have to do things that are very restrictive to maintain that. So we want to look at health and well-being and the whole life and the whole body. Um, another example that I can give is that people will spend all kinds of money to have the clothes to go to the gym, to have the gym membership, to buy the products and services to lose the weight, but their financial well-being is in a shambles. And so the stress that that is bringing is actually <laughs> negatively impacting everything that they're eating and doing at the gym. And so we want to try to bring all of that together and to look at a whole culture as a whole person to how to make everything fit together. 
and uh, I wrote a journaling program. Oh, okay. Um, the Mindful Me Journey, a 40-day guided journal toward a healthier relationship with food and exercise. And it's available on Amazon. Okay. It was a, a number one new release, and it actually has reached international distribution. Wow, that's amazing. But the whole, <laughs> the whole goal of that is it's a tool. It's a, it's a journaling tool to look at what am I doing with food? Why am I doing it? Usually the emotions come in if you're an emotional mm -hmm. eater or you're triggered by something at work or stress. And beginning to unpack... What am I doing? How can I do it different? And then walking you through how to mindfully become more attuned and in, 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 in tune with what you're doing and why. Um, in, um, and intuitive eating is a big thing, mm -hmm. but diet culture and intuitive eating are very, very far apart. Mindful eating and this journaling process kind of helps bridge that gap between the two to help move people away from that diet culture toward intuitive eating. What so, a great concept. Yeah, it's so well, relatable. It's visionary, according yeah. to uh, the award I yeah. got. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> well, congratulations on your Thank award. You. We're happy Thank that, you. You know, to have you here, and we yeah. hope to see you next year. Great. Too. Well, thanks for having me. I of appreciate course. the conversation. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. <laughs>